Welcome to the fifth unit of our MCT4C course. I'm Mrs. Logan and I will be guiding through this you through this wonderful adventure. Today's lesson is just a review of some of the trigonometry skills that you should know from your previous math experience. So we spent uh, quite a bit of time in grade 10 working with the SOHCAHTOA, the, th the three primary trig ratios. Uh, if you did academic, you would have also looked at the sine law and cosine law. If you didn't do academic, um, but then you did the mixed in grade 11, we also revisited the sine law, cosine law, as well as our primary trig ratios. So at some point you should have all of all of you should have experienced these things. All right, so we have our goal today to use the primary trig ratios, Pythagorean theorem and angle theorems to solve for unknown side lengths and angles in right triangles. Uh, you should also be able to use the sine law and cosine law to solve for unknown side lengths and angles in oblique or non-right angle triangles. First of all, we're starting with some facts for, that's tr that are true for any type of triangle. First of all, angles in the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, whether it's right angled or not. It will always, all three angles add together to be 180 degrees. When we label our angles, we use uppercase letters, so capital letters for our angles or the vertices of the triangle, and sides are labeled with the lowercase letter of the angle across from it. And that became important when we learned about the sine law and the cosine law and where all those letters needed to fit in with the angles that they correspond to. The last thing that I have for facts of any type of triangle is that solving a triangle means to find all the unknown side lengths and angles. So make sure if it says solve, you're finding all the missing information there. All right, so let's start with our tools that we know for a right angle triangle. We already have the tool that angles had to 180 degrees regardless of what kind of triangle it is. Uh, specifically, we have uh, right angle triangles, we have this thing called the Pythagorean Theorem. And I'm going to start with that because that was the thing you learned first before you ever learned about SOHCAHTOA. In fact, Pythagorean Theorem has been going on for many, many years, but for you guys, probably since uh, you were in grade eight. Pythagorean Theorem. So that's the one that says, if you know two side lengths of your right triangle, the third side length, the long side squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two shorter sides. So that's that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We actually had used that in our some of our problem solving in our quadratics unit already. So just remember that the c has to be your hypotenuse. It has to be your longest side. It takes the two shorter sides added together uh, to create the um, square of the, the um, hypotenuse. So this has to be your longest side, hypotenuse, not to be confused with hippopotamus. Hypotenuse, if I can actually spell it. Hi, hypotenuse, that's how you spell hypotenuse. All right, so that we already have discovered or worked with this, this um, semester so far. The other thing we have is that acronym called so -ca Oh, uh. Okay, so that was our acronym that we used for the three primary trig ratios. And what that says is that the sine, S stands for sine, of an angle. So sine never stands alone. It always has to be followed by an angle. You can't leave your sine dangling there. You have to have an angle next to it. Sine of theta is opposite divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The ca stands for the cos of theta which is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And our tan, TOA, stands for the tan of our angle, is opposite over adjacent. So your tan, cos, and, and sine always have to be followed by an angle. They cannot sit by themselves. They have to have an angle attached to them. Um, further to that, if you don't remember how to spell so ka TOA, uh, a little thing that I sometimes use is sine looks like sin when we, sp we spell it out. So we have S-I-N here for sin. And if you think of, oh, you've sinned, like O-H is the O, oh, you've sinned. Tisk tisk. Please don't sin. Um, the ka reminds me of cash. We're just missing the letter S in the ka. Cash, cos. Ah. Ah, oh, I have cash, let's go spend it. Okay, I'm not really that kind of person, but anyway. Uh, the TOA 
is tan. Ooh, ah, look at the tan. Of course, it's not so good to have tans now that we've discovered that sunning ourselves causes, causes skin cancer. So, uh, just another way to remember those things. All right, looking at our diagrams, I've got two different, oh, well, <laughs> actually two exactly the same triangles here, but what we're going to do here is label angle B here as my theta. And the reason I'm using angle B as my theta is I want to identify theta or B as my angle of reference. Now, based on that, um, this would be lowercase side C and this would be the hypotenuse because it's across from our 90 degree angle. Based on my theta and my capital letter B, this would be side B and it is opposite that angle of reference. And then A, this would be lowercase letter A, side A. This one is um, opposite angle A, but it's actually, I'm going to actually undo that. Um, yeah, it is letter A, but when it comes to our angle of reference, it actually is adjacent here. Adjacent. So that would be my ad, ad, uh, things that I'm using here for either cos or tan. Now, if we change that angle of reference to angle A, so I'm marking that with my theta, this is still side A, side C, side B, but what changes is not the hypotenuse, it's hypotenuse no matter what, and we never use that angle of 90 degrees as our angle of reference. We always have to use one of our other ones. Based on that angle A, side A is opposite, and this time side B is going to be adjacent because it's beside or next to angle theta. Okay, so just keep that in mind when we're working with those triangles. All right, move here. Uh, tools for non-right angle triangles or oblique triangles are things like sine law. So we have our sine law, which says, so sine law, if we take the length of side A and divide it by the sine of the angle across from it, that ratio, that division, is equivalent to taking the side B's length and dividing it by the sine of angle B, and that ratio will be equal to the side C length divided by the sine of angle C. So if I'm solving for side length, I usually put them on top, or you could just flip all of these over and, and work with the angles on top. So sine A over A would equal sine B over B will equal sine C over C. And notice uppercase and lowercase letters are important here. Make sure that when you're meaning a side length, you're using lowercase, and if you're meaning an angle, you use uppercase. So there's sine law. That is always good if you know one complete ratio. So you've got to have an angle and a side across from it, and then at least one other piece of information. If you don't have that, then you have to go into the cosine law. And the cosine law starts out like the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But because it's not a right angle triangle, that hypotenuse really isn't going to be as long as a hypotenuse is. It's really not your hypotenuse side at all because there is no hypotenuse in a non-right angle triangle. So your c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of angle c. So notice this side and this angle, they have to match. So whatever letter you use here, has to be the same letter, same um, the angle across from it. Okay, and then in the center here we had A and B. We have to have the two similar, two same letters here and here uh, attached to the multiplication of the two. So uh, these things we'll have a chance to use uh, in some examples in our next video.